All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the University of San Diego's Jacobs Institute for Innovation in Education. Um, we are happy to be hosting our summer guest speaker series, and we're happy that you all could join us today. Please introduce yourselves in the chat box. Let us know who you are and where you're coming from. I see a few comments in here already. We have oh, someone all the way from Ontario from Pennsylvania, from Palo Alto, the US Midway Museum, not too far from where I am downtown. That's awesome. We're so happy to have you with us. And we are delighted to have our guest speaker, Stephen Isaacs with us, who is the Education Program Manager of Epic Games. Thank you so much, Stephen, for joining us. My pleasure, thanks for having me. Um, <laughs> Good to see people here, uh, some familiar faces. I know Daniel, I know Alex, Lisa, of course, and um, saw somebody else pop in. I think Enrique might be here. Um, so good to see everybody and, and nice to see people that I might not know yet. Um, so yeah, so my name is Steve Isaacs. I uh, just started actually February 1st as the Education Program Manager at Epic Games, which is my new dream job, um, coming from my old dream job where I taught uh, game design and development um, at a middle and high school for about, well, I taught for 28 years, which is hard to believe, and retired from teaching, loved my teaching career, loved the program I was able to create, um, loved becoming great friends with people like Lisa Dolly and, and such over the years due to our game-based learning roots. Um, and so basically, you know, I was teaching for all that time, um, and then I got involved with Epic uh, through their mega grant program, which I'll touch on a little bit later. And uh, submitted a grant proposal for uh, a, a project called um, uh, Scalable Game Design, Fortnite Creative to Unreal Engine, with the goal being to get my students excited about game design, you know, from the lens of like Fortnite Creative and kind of scale the experience to get them up and running with Unreal Engine, which as you might or might not know is, you know, a, a pretty powerful, very powerful, um, you know, industry standard game development tool and so much more. Wonderful. So, Steven, can I do, can I have a, a bio? Oh, I'm bio sorry, I'm sorry. I thought, you, I thought you introduced me and we were ready to go. Oh, well, you know, we could do better than that. <laughs> well, we are so happy that you are here with us. Thank you so much for sharing some information because you definitely touched on some areas that I didn't have, which is awesome. Um, but we're happy to have you presenting on the topic, Interactive 3D in the Classroom, Bringing Out the Creator in All Students. And so a little bit about Stephen Isaac. He has been teaching since 1992. And in 1996, he opened a technology training and gaming center with a focus on innovative after-school programs and computer camps. In 1998, he began teaching uh, where he developed an internationally recognized middle school game development program. Steven is a pioneer in using VR and AR in the classroom. Woohoo, love that. He is a champion for providing a choice based environment to help students find and nurture their passion for learning. Steve is an ed tech influencer, community builder, and leader in game-based learning. As you can tell from his wonderful Fortnite background, <laughs> he is actively working on opportunities to address social emotional learning and empathy through games and involved in the K-12 to college esports pipeline in which he founded the um, esports edu or hashtag esports edu community with Tristan Miller. And Steve was honored as the 2016 is the outstanding teacher and the PBS digital innovator representing the state of New Jersey. So we are so excited to have you with us. And I see we have lots to learn from you. So now I will officially turn it over to you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I, I'm not going to say any of that stuff I already said. And, and uh, luckily, I let Alina do that because now I don't have to introduce myself anymore. So thank you for that very much. Um, but uh, so, so let's talk about um, Epic. A little bit. Um, so Epic Games, uh, you know, is 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 both you know a publisher as well as you know licensed software. Um, you know, I, a few of you may have heard of the game Fortnite, um, a little known game that's kind of taken the world a little bit by storm. Um, some of their other games, you know, Gears of War, 
Um, actually, I'd love to ask just in the chat if there are any old school Unreal Tournament, like original Unreal Tournament uh, players. I used to love um, the mode of the game, which was actually called Last Man Standing, which is a little bit of a foreshadowing, I'd say, for the whole Battle Royale idea. Um, but also, you know, the licensing side, um, you know, and Unreal Engine being their really their flagship product um, in terms of, uh, you know, content creation, you know, along so many different um, verticals. And we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, and, you know, so I'm, I had told you my role is the education program manager. Um, we have a small team. Our mission is really to provide resources to help bring out interactive 3D creator in all students. So my goal, which focuses on secondary education is for the most part, um, supporting educators and students, you know, creating and sharing free resources and supporting, you know, teachers and students, however we can. Um, one of the nice things is that we have the ability to support, uh, you know, teachers through whether it be training or a lot of the resources that we've created, um, many of which are created by teachers out in the community and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but one of the things that we talk a lot about, um, you know, in our space is interactive 3D. And I know when I started, you know, I had a, a vague understanding of the term, but it was kind of worth finding out a little bit more. So we have this really great, just quick four minute video that hopefully will set the context for a lot of what we're talking about when we talk about interactive 3D and real time technology. I'm Amanda, a community manager at Epic Games, and today we're talking about interactive 3D. We're experiencing a major shift in the way we work and communicate. We've moved from text and images to video, and now to a world where interactive 3D content is the norm. We're going to explore the technology that powers interactive 3D content and the skills that will be important in this immersive new world. What do we mean by interactive 3D? What we're really talking about is the ability to interact with the digital world the same way you do with the real one. Playing a game like Fortnite on your phone or computer is an example of this. Or it could be a virtual reality or augmented reality experience where you need to use special glasses or hardware to view and take part. But interactive 3D is not just for entertainment. Now we can simulate the real world in a meaningful way. For example, doctors can practice surgery before ever touching a patient. And it's possible to not only simulate what a surgeon would see during the operation, but also how it should feel. Car designers can try out new designs more easily. Usually designers start with a full-size clay model of a new car, and that can cost a lot to produce and take weeks to make. Now they can try out and make changes to their designs in a virtual design space. And we can experience this in our everyday life too. Before you buy a new cool graphic tee, you can turn around a digital version and look at it from every angle, or even customize it with your own colors and designs. So how does this work? The technology that powers all of these experiences is called real-time rendering. This is how the Weather Channel creates realistic simulations of hurricanes and storms that the newscaster can interact with on screen. In a traditional 3D animation, the film you are watching is made up of a collection of static images that are rendered by a computer. Rendering is the process of converting a 3D model to a 2D image. Oftentimes, it can take a computer or a collection of computers days, weeks, or even months to render an entire film. To further complicate things, if an artist wants to make even the smallest change, the entire thing has to be re-rendered. With real-time graphics, the 3D computer-generated visuals that you see are rendered and displayed almost instantly, making it easy for a director to make changes to special effects instantly and collaborate on a virtual set with actors. A real-time engine is the software needed to create these immersive experiences. An Unreal Engine is an award-winning real-time engine. We call it an engine, but it's not like a car engine. It's actually computer software created with code. The creation process for interactive 3D involves bringing 3D models into a real-time engine where behaviors and intelligence can be applied. This can include lighting, 
materials, physics, AI or artificial intelligence, user interaction, audio, animation, VFX, cinematics, and more. The result is not a simple image, but a 3D world that you can explore and interact with. As you move around, your view of the world changes and you get to see different things, as though you've stepped inside a film. As the industry changes and we start to see interactive 3D everywhere, the demand for people to create these experiences is skyrocketing. Real-time 3D skills are in huge demand. In the future, everyone will be a creator. Want to be part of building this immersive new world? Get started with Unreal Online Learning for free today. So, like I say, I love the video. Um, I just think it gives us a good you know, snapshot of how um, interactive 3D and real-time rendering is being used across so many industries. Um, which has been really, really exciting for, you know, for us at Epic because, you know, it, it, Unreal Engine was traditionally thought of as a game engine. And then when you see how powerful this is as, as a tool and what it can be used for in fields like architecture, TV and films, automotive, aerospace, um, you know, broadcasting, I love that part where they show the um, simulations in the, in the weather studio. <laughs> um, you know, live events, training and simulation, um, advertising, fashion, uh, there's so much to it. And one of the things that's neat is, you know, when I was talking about the licensing piece, um, it used to be the case where you licensed this software for quite a bit of money. <laughs> and it was the kind of thing that, you know, you, you know, really as a company were investing quite a bit into this technology. And then they changed the model and continue to change it to the point now where it's free to use. And I think it's been amazing to see how so many different people have, you know, taken to this tool and because of, you know, it being, you know, democratized in that way, I think, you know, the, the things that have come out of it in terms of what people are doing with the technology just continues to amaze me and hopefully you and, and all of that. Um, you know, when it comes to film and television, um, anybody, if you could in the chat, uh, Jot down what 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 show you think this might be from. Probably no. Actually, there's a little hint on there, but whether that gives it away or not, we'll see. Yep, Alex got it. You win a prize. Um, so the Mandalorian, um, the first season, all of the scenery that you've seen and it's pretty tremendous is done in, with like an LED wall um, and a volumetric, you know, um, capture room. So while there might be some 3D um, you know, props, the, all of that beautiful scenery, as opposed to using just a green screen and acting in front of that, the actors are actually acting in that environment, but it's all projected, um, you know, just beautifully. And, and that's being used in so many TV shows and, and films currently. Um, and again, it really helps, I think, with the, the ability to, you know, work with pre-production, post-production, um, and all of that. Uh, this is just a, a, a little example of some of the companies that you might recognize that are using interactive 3D in real time extensively in, in their um, fields and in it with their companies. And you see a lot of automotive um, companies here. And as you saw from the video also, they really have made huge strides in terms of the, the ability to you know, model and work on models um, in a very different and much more efficient and effective way. Uh, this, this slide, you know, is one that I love because, especially as a teacher, thinking of preparing students for a role potentially as an experiential designer, something, you know, I definitely did not have when I was in school. And the idea of how real time and interactive 3D is being used in live events and all that sort of thing just kind of goes to show some of the amazing ways that, you know, that our students can get into this field and, and do some really you know, groundbreaking cool stuff. Um, you know, I, I, I think you should go into school and tell all your students that you, you know, want to see them uh, go into experiential design. Um, we, another program that we have that we started recently, um, and this is, this fits well in the idea about the different industries, is we started a project called Unreal Futures. Um, some of you might have seen our Unreal Futures careers in advertising course, which was the first one we released. And it's basically 
um, a free online, like 30, uh, three hour course with videos that talk about how real time and interactive 3D is being used in the advertising industry and students who participate recreate um, in this first one, an Oreo cookie ad and by using the you know, Unreal Engine. And, and what's really neat about it in my opinion is, um, you know, and from the education team perspective, our goal is to get people into the engine, to get them comfortable, to help onboard them because a lot of people are intimidated by how powerful it is and how much you can do. This careers and advertising course really only focuses on a few important elements, which is like the camera lighting and um, animating the camera with the sequencer in order to recreate that ad and then show students that while the ad is produced there, if they wanted to change the packaging of the ad, it's a matter of just changing out one of the assets. And that becomes very important because Oreos ha has like 88 varieties of Oreo cookies and different packaging for different regions. So it's neat for kids to see that this is how they overcome that issue is like they could now create all of those commercials in a short time. Um, that video is on YouTube, I'm gonna go through. So we have definitely time for, um, for other stuff and questions and things. Um, yeah, and Daniel, low barrier for entry. That's, I mean, that's certainly our goal. And I'm glad you say that because the, you know, again, that's what we're trying to accomplish is to, to help people with that onboarding space of like saying, you know, here, let's let you get into it. Let's create resources for you to bring students in. Let's not make teachers feel like they have to be the expert to do that and all. Um, which brings us to this part where we, we like to kind of talk about a few common misconceptions or myths around Unreal Engine. And th that first one, you need to code to use Unreal Engine. Um, the beauty is, and this goes back to what Daniel was saying too, is you have the opportunity to design within Unreal Engine. There are plenty of assets um, that you can bring in that are already programmed, like when you use the third person um, template. Uh, even our VR templates allow you to get right in and be able to work in VR, you know, with the push of a button, essentially. Um, and then, you know, so that, so, so you can get in there and start building and experiencing and creating experiences without coding. Um, one of the teachers that does a lot of work um, with the lesson plans uh, that I'll share, Nick Pant, he create, he has his students create a um, virtual uh, history a, a history museum, a virtual history museum for his social studies classes. So again, he's not teaching tech. He's using the tool to allow his kids to express themselves. And it you know, works really well in what he's doing without even getting into the coding side of it. Um, another thing you know, that people talk about a lot is, is you know, different tools and what coding languages and stuff. Well, while C++ is behind Unreal Engine, there's a brilliant, um, a uh, visual scripting language called Blueprints that you can use exclusively without having to get into code. So it's a lot more sophisticated than your block-based languages because it has, it's so robust and many programmers and even game programmers and such do all of their programming in Blueprints. Some of course choose to go into C++ and, and code away. Um, but this example here is kind of showing in one of our tutorials, there's a part where you're having the player collect um, coins in the game. And this is how, this is the sort of the coding that was involved in doing that. And finally, and this is what I even mentioned already is that the not needing to be an expert. Um, this is Eric Alder, who's one of the teachers in LA that has done a lot of great stuff with Unreal Engine with his students and game design. And like, you know, and I'm the same way when I was in the classroom, I was not by any means, I'm still not <laughs> an expert with Unreal Engine, but you know, I was able to introduce it and allow students to to work with um, with what you know with the tools. Um, and yeah, th that's funny that you say that, Alex, because that was the first thing I noticed when I saw ads for Garage Game Builder is that it uses the Node system as well. Um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to get it, uh, but if you got it, I'd be interested to hear how you like it so far. Um, so some of the the resources that we have. And again, this is really to help people on board is we have computer science lessons. Um, we have an hour of code series that walks kids through creating their first interactive 3D platform game. Um, they do so with through step-by-step -step, uh, guides that we've provided as well as there's a teacher facing lesson plan and such. 
Um, and these are all tied to the ISTE and the CSTA standards. Um, and again, th these are a really low, easy lift for teachers because the actual, uh, there'll be resources that'll have the links and stuff. The, um, the ability to, uh, you know, go in and have the kids, you know, if you've done it as a teacher and then have your kids do it and with you as a facilitator, it's a very easy approach. We've also been doing a lot with Fortnite Creative in the classroom. Um, you know, for those of you who, you know, I mean, I, you know, for a large part of my career, I used, you know, Minecraft and then my students started asking for Fortnite Creative in the classroom, um, which is sort of where I did get my, my start with all of this. Um, and it's a beautiful sandbox environment. Um, you know, kids can use prefabs or gallery items or devices for automation. It has that low floor, high ceiling that I love about some of the sandbox environments because it's easy to get in and get started and to build in the environment, but the possibilities for what you can create are tremendous. And if anybody's played um, Fortnite Creative, you would, you know, you'd see what some of the creators out there are, are building. And, and our goal and commitment is to help a lot of other people become those creators. So we have a lot um, in the pipeline right now in terms of our educational resources, in addition to the general resources for Fortnite creative creators and building this sort of ecosystem where we bring some students in as students and then when they realize they want to go further, there's a whole slew of wonderful resources available for them. We also have a whole set of lesson plans for both Fortnite creative, Twin Motion, and Unreal Engine. Those are have all been created by teachers. Um, one of the things we do, I mentioned earlier, we're a very small team, but we have um, contracted with a lot of teachers to, you know, to have them come on board and, and create lessons and experiences for, for us. Um, Fortnite Creative, we also did a full hour of code series. And this is, um, you know, similar to the ones for Unreal Engine, it's been in Fortnite Creative and a lot of stealth learning in the computer science side because you know, when you're doing a conditional statement where you need a key to unlock a door and that's part of the mechanism or the mechanics of the game it you know we can teach these skills without you know having to teach you know too much coding or programming might have mentioned but all of our products are free um this is the mega grant program which i mentioned i want to also definitely make sure we leave time for q a the mega grant program, this is one of the things that really drew me to Epic also is that um, they, they announced this $100 million in grant funding program. And to my delight, education was one of the arms that they were supporting. So it's like if you're a game developer or if you're in certain industries or education, those are the areas that they're supporting. So essentially $20 million was earmarked for um, education to support cool things that educators are doing in the classroom with their students and all of that. And it's, it's not for hardware, but like, in other words, if you're going to develop a program and maybe scale that program out a bit, we want to support you in doing that. So that could mean, you know, time for developing the program or resources that you make available as part of the program and all. So um, as a recipient myself, I can honestly say that the process was, was great and the team that you know evaluates them um, is very excited about supporting education. Um, so here, these are, will all be in the resource um, pack that Alina is going to um, going to share out um, in terms of you know our Teach with Fortnite course, the Unreal Engine Learning Portal, um, our Unreal Futures courses, and all that. You know, it's all available to you. Um, and I did. You know what I'll do is I'll go back to my first slide to so my contact info, um, feel free to reach out. And with that, um, I wanted to, you know, we're at, we have about a half hour, so I wanted to make sure we leave time for Q&A, but please, um, by all means, and Alex says that it is so much fun. Okay, so you've already been, so wait, you've already been using it that extensively? Because I know it only came out a few days ago. That's cool. And anybody can please come off of mute and talk to us. Uh, that's what we're here for. And my yeah. mother is in the waiting room. Hi, mom. That's Steve, I was funny. talking about using Fortnite Creative, actually. I had a oh, student cool. <clears throat> use that. I um, hooked up my Xbox and got on my account, and he uh, 
created a game in like an hour and a half, two class right. breaks. That it is awesome. Super fast. And yeah. he wasn't doing anything before that. And then whenever he saw Fortnite on my Xbox, he was like, yeah, I'll do something now. Yeah, yep, exactly. I had so many of those kids where it was like, they weren't doing much. And then all of a sudden they heard they could use Fortnite Creative and they're like, wait, I could use Fortnite Creative. And, and the amount of the volume and quality of work was incredible as, as you've seen. Um, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Um, and have you used it also on, like in other words, you said your Xbox, but do you also have it available on PC for, for students currently? Currently, no, we have um, <clears throat> 30 Mac minis that won't um, uh, run anything from Epic right now. So gotcha. I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> um, and, and they are, they also made recently um, a, a lighter install for Fortnite for people who and it really is gonna help be helpful in schools because in a lot of schools, you know, the resources you have might not handle it more than anything, the large download, because you could always scale down the graphics. But in this case, you know, why bother on a school computer that doesn't have 30 gigs free? Why bother installing that? So there's like about a half the size install that automatically runs things at lower, lower specs, which is really kind of nice to know. And to your point too, Alex, um, one of the things I loved is the especially during COVID is the kids I had that were working collaboratively on different devices um, and, you know, actually having an easier time working from home than they would have in school was pretty interesting to, to see. Steve, I'd love to see some of the work um, that some students have created in Unreal Engine. Is there like an online platform where you can see some of the work? Uh, you know what, let me, now that you mention it, let me, um, let me at least show you a, are you still seeing my, now my, my Google screen? Yes. Okay. So this was my um, old, uh, well, it's still in, in operation, but my, my class website. And one of the things that uh, we have is, I'll show you more of the Fortnite creative right now. Unreal Engine, I could find things as well, but um, this is a quicker find. Um, so one of the projects that I absolutely love in Fortnite Creative was our Fortnite Creative Rube Goldberg machines. You can hear that, right? So this, when I wrote this um, lesson plan, it was kind of intended for science classes because of the simple machines. Um, but my kids for game design used it to learn automation. turn off the sound so you can enjoy watching it, but we can chat. But this is just one of many student examples. Um, so much fun too, like the kids, what they've done with, uh, you know, with, with Fortnite Creative. And in this case, you know, they had to really think a lot, iterate a lot. Um, it's really quite a fun activity. And I, so let's see, Steve, can you recommend a super low barrier way for a teacher to get started, especially if they've never coded or built in VR? So good question. 
Well, for one, and it's funny, Alina and I were talking about this earlier, the Oculus Quest is, um, is a great uh, point of entry for, for VR, um, aside from a few limitations in terms of the, some of the ways you need to have an account linked and such. But, but other than that, price point wise, it's great and you can hook it up to the computer and do quite a bit with it. Um, that's for the VR side. Um, another thing, so, so yes, so if we're not talking about VR per se, I mean, Fortnite Creative, most kids have Fortnite on some platform or other. Um, so that reduces the barrier to entry. One of the things, and one of my biggest missions in life right now is to work on creating virtual machine options where we can make um, the idea of much more accessible, where we can have kids running even on their Chromebook and attaching to a virtual machine to use, whether it be Unreal or any or these other products. Um, that's, you know, like I say, that's kind of like my, <laughs> it's like my, it is my mission, I'd say, right now. So we're working and trying to build partnerships to make that possible. Um, it's tough because it still comes at a, you know, a cost, uh, but it might become the answer that doesn't require schools to have the really high-end hardware. And more importantly, you know, so many of these schools that have way too many Chromebooks <laughs> and, you know, can, uh, can hopefully start to put them to good use. Steve, I'm going to interject just for a moment and um, just announce that I'm going to stop recording. However, if you would like to hang on um, and continue to chat with Steve and ask questions, feel free to do so. And I'm going to put in the chat box a link to our future guest speaker sessions. Um, so if you want to check those out, feel free to do so.